Welcome to the Speedway Chat Show hosted by Jerry Sims and Wilbur Hancock. We would like to say a massive thank you to all our partners that make the show possible. Make sure you like, comment, and share our videos. It helps get Speedway in front of more people. It's really easy to find our podcast. Just say, hey, Alexa, play Speedway Chat Show Podcast. Enjoy, buckle up, and get ready for an awesome ride. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another Speedway Chat Show. I just got you there, Jerry. Yeah. Wilbur wanted to go get on on that first. He was like, can I introduce you? I was like, go for it. You do it. Oh, I forgot that it's Wednesday afternoon. I forgot that part. You know, that's bad on my part. That's bad on my part. Sorry. Yeah, so get your comments in for Freddie Linger, and it's going to be a, a, an amazing show. Um, he's going to answer all your questions, if uh, if they're good, obviously. Um, just want to say a massive thank you to SP2A Speedway for all of their help with the Speedway Chat Show. Uh, they help pay for a bit of advertising and things like that. But uh, Ian Jordan, thanks very much. And uh, we have another guy, a friend of mine uh, from Jatta Construction, has donated 500 pounds uh, yesterday towards the bike build. So um, we're getting close now. Me and Will, we need to sort of get our thinking caps on and how we're gonna um, choose the winner of the bike giveaway. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good one and uh, how, how it's gonna be given away as well. So uh, anything else we need to talk about, Wilbur? Start of well, I mean, this year, this was that? Start of Extra Liga this week? Oh, yes. Oh, I mean, they had their first match on Sunday. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched both of them. It was, good. It was pretty good. It was interesting. Last year was a little bit slow starting, wasn't it? But it was, it was, yeah. It was good. I think it was good to watch watch some Speedway now, <laughs> finally. Um, there hasn't been much for the for a while, and uh, the track seemed pretty good. But what's crazy is that it's snowing in Poland now. <laughs> yeah, in April. In, in what almost second week of april it's snowing so insane so <laughs> we do have a massive announcement at the end of the show so stick around to the very end of the show and we will be announcing who is going to be our monday guest so next week we on monday on monday not on wednesday um so yeah check that out it's going to be uh, can't believe we've got this guy so um we'll be good wilbur do you want to do the honors and uh, introduce our guest. Yes, I will do so. Uh, the number three ranked speeder rider in the world currently is uh, in Poland right now. Just newly signed for Monster Energy, Mr. Fredrik Lindgren. Hey, Freddie, how are you? Hello. Hello. Oh. Welcome. We just spoke to him just a second ago, an absolutely perfect signal. And now we've gone live and he's cutting out. Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, oh there we go. Hear you hear you. Good, good. Um, how are you, dude? You good? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm struggling on and, uh, you know, trying to prepare for the new up and coming season. Cool. And uh, let's let's talk about the monster deal. How did that come about? How did uh, did Joe approach you? Or yeah, it was uh, Joe who approached approached us, the team, and uh, uh, started the, the the negotiation. And uh, uh, we we made a deal fairly quickly, and uh, then it was about getting all the paperwork sorted out. And uh, here we are now. I'm. Uh, Monster Energy athletes for 2021 and 2022. So, what are your plans going forward with them? Well, uh, my aim is to represent the brand in the best possible way that, that I can, and uh, hopefully, it will also give me uh, uh, a lot of new, uh, new connection, contacts, and, and a good network to to maybe meet up uh, with other athletes uh, doing similar stuff like myself. Uh, maybe not but in, in other disciplines and uh, gain experience from from these guys as well that we really cool 
I see. That's awesome. So, um, the last couple of seasons, you've, uh, you've you've been doing real well. You've been in the top top three in the last three three years. Is that right? Uh, almost. I've been in the mix at least. Uh, I would say from the past four years uh, since I came back uh, into the GPs, uh, I was really pushing for uh, a medal in, in 2017 when I. Eventually broke my neck and missed the last two rounds. But uh, in 2018, I was back and got the bronze medal. Uh, finished fourth in, in 19 and another bronze now in 2020. And uh, what, what do you put this success down to? Yes. I promise we were watching, we were talking to Freddie just before the show. And uh, his signal was absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with it at all. And the second we've gone live. Now a little, there we go. Oh, we just got him now. So Freddie, what was, what was, uh, yeah. What, (laughs) what do you think was the key to your success? I would say a lot of hard work. Uh, You know, I got back into the GPs. uh, uh, I tried to find the the people to get better and, uh, work on every detail really in regards of, of a bike like myself uh, mainly with my physical condition my mental condition with with everything where i could uh, try and find and gain an advantage i, I tried and uh, you know I, I keep working and uh, hopefully I will, I will even get better and uh before before when you was in the gps did you did you think you was doing all those things um and then sort of See, then found another level, or, or, or was you just maybe a bit young and complacent? Hey, you know, I came, I came into a full-time Jeep rider pretty early. Uh, I was, I think, it was twenty-one at the time. I was twenty-one or twenty-two. And looking back now, maybe it was way too early for me. Uh, looking back, maybe I would have needed a couple of more years to to gain experience before I, I hit the the big time and. Uh, Doing the Grand Prix and not succeed, uh, you know, I was staying on the eighth to tenth position for a number of years. Uh, it is tough, you know, both, you know, mentally but financially, and you know, you you want to do so well, then you you fail time and again, and uh, it's uh, it's really tough. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not you've already had a. I mean, you you've been at the top level for a long time, and you've had some really cool sponsors. And I mean, uh, one of the biggest hot dog companies in Sweden, um, Stan Soccer. Uh, how did you come about getting sponsored by them? Uh, that was uh, when I when I moved to Molilla Dakana. Uh, they just uh, uh, bought the, the sausage company, and uh, we meet uh, in the winter time, and uh, they really wanted to. To have my as the, the face of the, the new sausage, the, the speed by core of the speed by sausage, and uh, uh, we started talking. And uh, from then on, they've been a great support to my career, and uh, you know, they are really, really great people as well. And uh, they're almost like family to me now. Yeah, it's really, really cool. You eat sausage. <laughs> Again, how many times? How many times a week do you eat the sausage? Oh, every day if I can. <laughs> I <just> love that. <laughs> Is it good, Wilbur? Oh yes, it's very good. I remember I make uh, like like the breakfast burritos with it. So I make some eggs and I put some hot sauce in there and then I put some of the sausage. It's so good. Yeah, they're awesome. They, they have uh, the best thing with with their sausages. Uh, it's, it's top quality. You know the the percentage of meat is uh, is unreal. You know it's a uh, it's some really good uh, good food for you as well. Mm-hmm. And it fills you up. It's like you can have one or two of them, and you're like, "Ooh, man, full now." <laughs> yeah. uh, good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so you have a new new addition to the family. Yeah. <laughs> wow. How was uh, how's how's that been for for Freddie's in the winter? Wow. What should I answer is, do you want the truth? <laughs> in the <laughs> beginning, I. It, we in the, the beginning, uh, yeah, in the beginning, I thought to myself, what have I done? You know, it's uh, <laughs> hard work. It was, 
it was crazy. I thought, how am, how am I gonna, you know, uh, mix the, the speed bike career and having a baby uh, with the training and also have energy for, for the training and, and the baby. So that was, uh, took me, I would say, a couple of weeks before, uh, before it got better and better. But uh, now I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah, I feel like I've, I bonded with Middle in a better, better now. And um, I really miss her. I went to Poland uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and they've stayed in Spain at the moment. So um, I'm here by myself away from them, and it's been, uh, been tough. Exactly. I mean, I was talking to my mom about it and stuff like that in the beginning. I mean, it was I was like five weeks old when I went to my first speeder race. She was like, we probably made the wrong decision having, having a baby in the beginning of the season. Probably wasn't the greatest idea because <laughs> I no, believe I my think, dad yeah. went to – yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. I mean, it takes I would say it probably takes a couple of weeks to to kind of find your feet and and get into rhythm with with having a baby. So having it, I'm lucky it was at the end of the season and not at the start. Uh, that would have been tougher, I think. I mean, my dad went. Uh, it was the Eskilstuna GP, I think it was, um, and he went to the practice, then went straight to the hospital. And then back to the next day to the race and had a horrible race, but <laughs> he had me. Yeah. So apparently I'm the, I'm the cause of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had a pretty pretty weird one too as uh, uh, Carolina gave birth uh, uh, on the Friday at the same as the, the first Touring GP uh, when I was kind of chasing the, the world title. So that was uh, very, very strange. That's true. You, you didn't you didn't see her for a few days, did you? Didn't you have to go to Chesterhova or something? Or you had to go yeah, somewhere? Yeah, no, I went back to she she made birth in Chesterhova and uh, I got back there and obviously with the COVID situation, uh, I wasn't allowed into the hospital at, at first, but uh, we managed to sneak in uh, in I think two days time and uh, got to see her. So and that was good. Wow. That's really cool. And, uh, in the in the winter, you actually spend your winters in Spain. Is that right? Yeah, we we kind of uh, have a bit in Andorra, so we stay a bit there. But uh, this winter, we stayed uh, most of the time in the south of Spain. We have a place down there. It's uh, where I feel it's, it's really good for my training with the weather down there. So uh, we stay the most time this winter. I remember you making a few uh, like day in the life videos on on uh, YouTube and stuff, and I watched watched some of those. And I mean, the scenery over there it's so so beautiful. Yeah, it's really it's really nice, and yeah, we have the ocean uh, very close, only a couple hundred meters, and uh, have a very nice view as well from the balcony or the terrace. So it's uh, I we really, really enjoy uh, enjoy it down there. That's really cool. You have a message here from one of your fans. Hey, Freddie, hold the gas tight because you have to defeat Lesno. We count on your points and show that you are a lion on your chest. Yeah, I, I, I do my best every time. I gave 100%. Yeah, right here. Thanks to you, um, Chestakova's team is confident in playoff. Yeah, we have to see about that, hey. <laughs> <laughs> How's the pressure? In Poland, racing in the extra league compared to like riding at Wolverhampton in the UK. The biggest difference, uh, of course, uh, I would say the tracks are a lot bigger uh, compared to, especially Wolverhampton. It's a pretty tiny track, uh, but uh, also the, the atmosphere and the fans. Uh, uh, Just not, about. Can you not hear him either? Yeah. I can hear him. Uh, Am I back? Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. Yeah, yeah I could, I could hear you. Yeah, I think so it was just your... Basically, with the uh, with the atmosphere, like uh, uh, just over where I raced, uh, our average crowd was fifteen thousand the last time we, we were able to have crowds there. So it's, uh, I you get super popular. I get. that's really cool um i have a question right here give me one second um so you do a lot of motocross speaking of like off-season stuff uh you do a lot of motocross i don't know do you do some of that in spain as well 
Yeah, it, it is in Spain. I uh, normally race, uh, ride motocross. I didn't do any this winter because I had some trouble with my. But uh, normally on the. Now I lost him. Yeah. There we go. Are, we, are you back there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I hear you guys. Okay, perfect. Um, you say you had an injury, right? And you, you sustain, sustained that last year? Uh, no, that was, uh, I think, two years ago in 2018, I think it was. I had a, a crash and uh, injured my hand, and it never really healed up properly. So uh, I've been struggling for it uh, for, since then and uh, decided to have it checked up uh, after this season. And... Uh, uh, basically, it was the, the ligament in the hand was uh, it's not functional at all, so they had to go in and, and remove my ligament and put uh, like artificial ligament in there instead, and uh, been a lot of rehab work to, to get the hand uh, working again. Is it your left or your right hand? My right hand. Throttle. Oh, wow. Oh, your throttle one. That's fine. You need to just get a piece of tape or something and stick it wide open. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I, had a, I have a funny story with it because um, um, yeah, for the playoffs in Eskilstuna, oh, I just lost him. Bye -bye. Damn it. There we go. You're back now. <laughs> it like keeps going in and out. It's a little, it's a, but it's good now. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. We had a playoff in Estuna and I was struggling with the hand and uh, I had to have an the. Uh, but we had a little bit too much. I couldn't really feel my my hand at all. So uh, during during the races, I couldn't, I couldn't feel the throttle. I could only go like full gas, and that was it. Oh, is this in 2018, you said? Yeah, yeah, 2018. Oh, yeah. So I believe we were there, too, in that one. That was quite int I remember that. That that wasn't a great one for us. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys beat us. It was, like, all the way down to the final. I think we were talking to Oliver last week about this. It was down to the final, and Esco Studa just completely destroyed us. So I mean that yeah. wide hope, the wide open thing probably helped a lot. Yeah, it probably helped me definitely. <laughs> uh, Reese said it was Tarnov 2018. Yeah, yeah, the crash. That's that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, so we have so. a message here from Rob Shaw saying, "Can uh, can you wish his wife Jill? Uh, it's her birthday today. Say happy, happy birthday. birthday, Jill. Hope you have a hope you have had a great day." Even though it's a little bit, it's a little sucky because of COVID, but happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, Joe. Um, there we go, Freddie. Should be your year this year. How yeah, do you feel well, like? Do you think you're prepared? Uh, well, I, I've prepared the, the best that I can. And, uh, you know, we uh, we kind of try and ease into this season and uh, hopefully hit some form, you know, when it matters. You know, that's uh, what it's all about. I mean, you've been you've been third place for uh, two years now, um, third or it was third, fourth, third, um, but you've been constantly right there at the top, and you've always been in the mix. There's there's rarely a GP where you've been, you know, had a crazy crazy off one or something like that. You're a very consistent rider, but what are you going to switch up for this season to make you feel like you know what? If I do this a little bit differently, then I'm gonna be closer to getting that title. Because I mean, at the end of the year, you're always right there, and there's never someone that goes, "Oh, you you count, Caddy, uh, um, Freddie off of it," um, because there's no way you can. You you're always right there. Yeah, you know, I go into the every round and I, I give everything I have. I got 100 percent, and uh, you know, sometimes it's enough, sometimes it isn't. But uh, uh, what's missing, I would say, you know, I, I'm pretty well classed when it comes to first corners to track down riders and, and make overtakes. But uh, maybe what I'm lacking 
uh, to be at the very top uh, is gating. You know, I've never been a natural gator, and I've, I've worked hard to to get better, but I'm still not classy from the start. I think so. That's probably what I'm gonna focus at, try and focus at uh, this year. I know you use your hydraulic clutches, and I don't think you've been using those for a while. Do you feel like that has helped you in the right direction as well? Yeah, for so I, I, uh, I've used it now for four years, I think it is, and uh, I really like the feel of the hydraulic clutch. It's always the same feeling compared to uh, a cable clutch. So uh, for me, it's working, but of course, it's, it's rider preference as well. Exactly. I've tried them myself, for, from, but I mean, for me, it was like, it's like going from the complete opposite, you know, uh, <laughs> running just a regular clutch for a long time. And then you go into something that like doesn't have as much feeling. Um, it's a whole different thing. And sometimes you can make a perfect start. And sometimes the clutch can engage so hard that you're just like, whoa, okay, that was completely off. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I like the feeling. I, you know, from the, from the first time I got on it, really, I, I really liked the, the feeling of that. So, no, it's a rider preference. Did do you um, incorporate that from like your motocross riding? Did that come from that? I think most motocross uh, bikes they come with a hydraulic clutch, and I think most race bikes have them on. But uh, yeah, a motocross uh, bike is different to a speeder bike as well, so you, you can't really compare it. I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, you've been in the sport for a while now. You've almost had probably about almost 15, 15 years in the, in the GP series, probably more than that. Um, do you, I mean, what are your plans after racing? I lost a bit. Oh, there you go. Can you hear us? What, what's your plans for after racing, Freddie? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Say good? again. What 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 are your plans for after racing? Yeah. Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about, but uh, yes, um, I think uh, I'm still focused on racing and trying trying to get better and uh, develop within my racing. So I don't know. I I don't I don't have an answer. Do you feel like you would maybe want to do something to uh, help with the youth? No, I've been probably, thinking about that. Be you know, sitting I think, by the uh... lake like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish every day. Yeah. Every day for the <laughs> every, all of every, your every retirement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the naked Freddy. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome, that. Everybody loves the naked yeah. Freddy. <laughs> it, it, it's yeah, that yeah, guy in the town who's always life. naked. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time that I met you um, was in Swindon. I think it was for Steady's testimonial, and uh, yeah, and, you, yeah. and you had a thing with that you wasn't posting any photos of yourself online unless you had your top off. Ah, oh, yeah, that was a couple. Of, that's a couple of years ago, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the first some... time I met you, and I was like, "What is this dude all about?" <laughs> yeah, I've done some, uh, I've done some stupid things in my life for sure, and you live and you learn. Wasn't that? <laughs> was it a bet or something? You had a bet with a friend, and then you had to do like one month or three months or something. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Now uh, I remember. Well, I did some bets with a very close friend of mine, and we had posted uh, a couple of photos with my top off, and. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite funny. <laughs> um, just recently, the speedway community has like started to boost the two fifty cc um like races, and and I mean the world championship has now officially become a a real world championship. Um, do you feel like the step between an eighty five to two fifty, then to a five hundred, is a lot better than going from an eighty five to a five hundred? Yeah, I'll say so. I uh, you know I can only go to myself and remember when I went from. 80 C2 to 500 and you know it's like a complete different sport you know the 80 CC and the 500 and I was uh, I was scared in the beginning I must say you know you know the power we have in the 500 CC bikes are you know amazing and uh, you know to go from from, from the 
a small bike to a big bike like that with a lot of horsepower, I think it is dangerous. So I think it's a good uh, good step to have a, a middle step from A to C to uh, 250 first and then to pass. Yeah, and, and I mean, just going, it's a 85 two stroke you're looking at, and then the bike is completely different, and you have to ride the bike quite differently as well. Um, you, there's not much play in the throttle. You have to kind of keep it wide open constantly. To uh, to get the younger guys to get more more experienced with the uh, with the way the race speedway, like later on, I would go away from the two stroke uh, totally and and have a smaller uh, four stroke, maybe 100 cc or 150 cc four stroke instead of the 80 cc. Too yeah, I mean that's what that's what they run over here in the states, um, and I also I, I ran a, a four stroke against the eighty fives over there. I mean there was the speed is completely different, um, and but I mean just in general, it's I think it's better to just have a four stroke um, because you're going from a four stroke to a four stroke then. But I mean when you have the step with a two fifty, it probably helps out a lot more. Yeah, but as you, as you said, I would, I would think it would help if everyone started on a four stroke because. Uh, Here we go. Here we go. Your team for 2021, is it staying the same? Is it this team? Uh, no. Uh, we have uh, Dave Haynes is back and uh, Jonathan Berg yeah. are back and Carolina is, is yeah. managing uh, everything and. You know, of course, I'm the rider. Um, <laughs> That's pretty good. But we had some, we had some sad, uh, a sad time. We had a sad time during the the winter time when uh, my mechanic uh, uh, died uh, in the in, oh. in his bed uh, during the winter uh, with the with heart failure. Uh, Kamil Polchinski, an old ex rider, and uh, yeah, there was. That was a, that was tough, you know, very tough, and you know, I think oh, about him the in, in now, this now and then. But no, that's Lucas. He was uh, with before, so this is uh, only a picture. But uh, that was tough for for the whole team, and uh, yeah, we haven't mm. found. there still <laughs> are we good can you hear us is it is it dave haynes and jono do you have any other mechanics or is it just those two this year yeah did, did you hear him just yeah no Okay, it was uh, David Haynes and Jonathan Burks. Those are the two mechanics for this year. Just the two, yeah. Okay. Uh, Correct. Freddie, can you uh, explain what happened here? I've had a accident. Uh, this is the crash in uh, Tarno when I, in the man, I think, in 2018. Okay. So I think we have this, the whole sequence. Uh, like, what are you thinking here when you're like, this guy's not even holding onto the bike? I'm in trouble here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, you know. I, Ev uh, everybody, you know, in try and get here. get off your bike, you know. Wow, now you can see my hand. Yeah. Oh. Got caught in something. So, you uh, see that that other guy's front wheel is completely demolished. Destroyed, yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's yeah. uh, we have a video here as well. Let's see if we can uh, if we can play. This. Jerry's got all the information. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go here. Which is it? It's this one here. It's an extra league crash. Are you going to add it to the stream? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, 
Ooh. That was a hard hit. Yeah. But this is um it was it was a bad crash. But what really surprised me is the state of the bike. Check check out the track staff in a second who's trying to pull out his bike. Yeah, I was uh bike was like uh I don't know, bent sausage. <laughs> Yeah, look at oh, it. whoa. It's not worth very much now. Yeah, that's Jono. Oh. This, this bike is yeah. uh, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> you don't use that one anymore? No, I don't use it. You couldn't straighten it out. <laughs> couldn't straighten it out. Well, uh, what other ones we've got here? We've got uh, another one here with... Is it Lucas or Alice Strim or one of the two? I'll uh, just get this out. In Sweden or is it like in Gothenburg or something like that? Uh, Copenhagen. Says, Copenhagen. Yeah. 2008. Yeah. It's a really bad quality because of the because of when it was uploaded. But you're... Uh, one. Get the this line. is beat number 11. Away goes the starting marshal up by the chase very, very quickly indeed. And it's a great start for Lucas Dribble around the outside in yellow. Goes Nils Christian Ingers and the man in white is Freddie Lee. Oh! oh. And the back straight. Lucas Oh, Dribble you lost control Dribble. completely over that bike for a second. You didn't even have your hands and handlebars for a long time. That was an ugly crash down bike. the back straight. And probably a yeah, bonus for Jason Grubb who was struggling at that point. The weirdest that one is that I got excluded, I think. You got excluded from that one? Yeah, that's the weirdest part, I think, because I don't know where what I should have done, really. Yeah, watch this in slow mo. Goes as you go down the back straight. You're in a uh, white helmet. Right. Yeah. yeah. White helmet. Yeah. Oh. Oof. I don't you know. were lucky. <laughs> Could have been a lot worse. Yeah, it was, it was not too bad. It was just uh, some damaged ribs there. So, uh, yeah, not too bad. And they excluded you from that? Yeah, that's the... Yeah, I don't know. What, what, uh, what's that the wrong, really? That's really weird. That's a, that's a crazy one. You know, if, you're not allowed to try and pass anyone on the outside. That's true. <laughs> I mean, you, you were just moving out. You were on your line, but then he tried to... I don't know. That was weird. Yeah. Uh, history. It's history now. It's history now. <laughs> Yeah, are you friends afterwards? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're friends. No, <laughs> no hard Yeah, so the so the big crash that um you know I remember just watching it on TV, just going, "What the f just happened?" Is, are you uh, trying to tell the, me I'm I'm crashing a lot? or what what's going on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, when I when I when I punched in your name. There was just crashes after crashes after crashes, and I was like, "Okay, I, I but you know what? You know what? You have the best. You have the best save out of anyone in the GP ever, or anyone in Speedway in general. Honestly, it could possibly even be like any motorsport. You literally picked your bike up and wheelied your bike over it over another person's bike so that you yeah, wouldn't. And we have that now. So here we go." I mean, it's freaking insane. From the man in the white helmet color, an injury replacement tonight. Michael Michelson and now Dudek high in the dirt. Trucking the outside rock. All the track is certainly lightening up now. The racing is getting better and better. I don't understand how. Back straight into the oh, land. Oh, he's gone oh, down. I mean, oh. Oh, dear, dear, dear. <sighs> well, well, well. Let's hope the boys are going to be okay here, because that was a big one. Freddie Lindgren trying desperately to get out of the way. Let's have a look at this. Is and that too hard? Freddie. Is that too hard for Mikkel Mickelson? I'll tell you that what, Freddie Lindgren. That happens so wow. quickly. Wow. How, Frick. how do you, Whoa. like... Nasty crash. And I'll tell you what, that is a minor miracle that they've all got up. When you're going down that straight at that speed... Mikkelson's speak. hard on Dudek there. Where are you He's going? Very hard oh, on I need to pick the front wheel up and jump over his bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you watch it closely, you can see my first 
first reaction is kind of to try and, and lay the bike out because that's kind of the first thing you do if someone crashes in front of you. But normally that happens yeah. in the corner. But I quickly realized that this, the, this bike ain't going to stop, you know. So uh, slam yeah. it right away. I try and kind of wheel tap uh, over Patrick and try and, <laughs> you know, miss him, try and hit his bike and, you know, off we go. No way. Yeah, I, th I think Patrick came the best off of out of that accident, yeah. you know, I think, yeah. I think, uh, Max, Max didn't, didn't do him any good. Yeah. If you look closely, yeah, Max's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Max's <laughs> shin. Yeah. It's the end, you know, I think. Yeah. That was yeah. nasty. And he gets like flipped over the side of the bike and he's like hanging on off the side of it straight into the fence. Yeah. yeah. I think his, uh, his reactions wasn't uh, as good as mine. <laughs> Max, he was behind me, eh? Yeah. Uh, he, he should have had more time. <laughs> uh, Freddie broke his back at Bellevue. We don't have that video, but uh, do you want to tell us about that one, Freddie? You broke your back in Bellevue? What happened there? Yeah, I, I can do. You know, we uh, it was uh, coming to turn three. We go, we're going pretty side by side, me and Kenneth Pierre, I think it was. And uh, we kind of just... Uh, Tangle coming in and uh, there was a high speed crash and uh, I landed on my I think my head or my neck and could feel straight away there was something was not right it had like a burning feeling on my back and uh, eventually when we got to the hospital and had X rays uh, my vertebrae uh, was broken in three places so it was uh, it was very bad you know the the doctor said it. Very, very unstable, and uh, they call it the, the core can uh, can uh, can go. So you have to, you know, be very still. Otherwise, you you might be paralyzed. Yeah, wow. that's crazy. Just hearing all yeah, types of uh, stories like that is just insane. Yeah, but luckily, uh, you know, everything went well, and uh, I could ride on. Yeah, exactly. We have. Wolf Speedway right here commented, not as good as Heat 13 of the 2016 Grand Final second leg. Yeah, it was a uh, big race with Sagar and Craig Cook. Eh? And, uh, it was a bit of a heat, heated moment afterwards from Craig Cook. But, uh, it's a good race. Freddie was unbeaten in, the, in both legs of the 2017 playoffs. Insane. Yeah, is with uh, Craig Cook being heated, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so, it's a shame. You, you know, we we could have won the title with Wolves in 2017 as well, but you know, I broke my neck and watched my teammates lose the final in in the hospital bed. It was uh, it was pretty heartbroken. Cool. And um, do you have any, do you have any plans to come and ride back in England? Oops. At the moment, I will, uh, I will never say never. So, um, at the moment, I'm pretty happy with life, mm -hmm. racing in only Polish league and, and the Grand Prix. But uh, I will never say never. So, so you're not riding in Sweden at the moment? No, I'm only doing uh, Polish extra league and the uh, Grand Prix series. Cool. So, so what? The Grand Prix series. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, when COVID hit last year, what were your thoughts? And do you feel like Speedway, the whole Speedway community in general, uh, handled it correctly? It was very tough, uh, especially in March time. You know, I was kind of ready to jump on the plane and go to Poland for my first practice. And uh, in the last minute, I decided not to jump on the plane. And uh, lucky, lucky I didn't because uh, Poland kind of shut down. Uh, just two days after that, and uh, it, it was weird not knowing what was going to happen. And uh, I think we we were lucky in a way. An, an extra league did a great job to to get the series going, and, and we did a, a full league. And also the the Speed GP did eight rounds. Uh, we got a world a world champion in, in Smart League, and uh, I think the Speedway came out uh, fairly well uh, in the circumstances. I see. 
for sure. Um, what what do you think to the back to back Grand Prix? It was really tough from a, a rider's perspective. Uh, I remember a few times, you know, especially when you when you've done good and you've been in the final on the Friday and you take so much energy out of you and you're exhausted. And I, you know, I wake up on the Saturday morning and I'm like feeling so tired and I'm thinking, man, you know, <laughs> let's do one more here. You know, find some energy from somewhere and try and try and do it. But uh, it was now, tough. Now, now you've got the monster energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now it'd be no problem. No problem. <laughs> three, three cans. Yeah, yeah just doing the tune. He'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was tough, but everyone was in the same position. So, uh, you know, I guess uh, I, I did very well on the Saturday, actually even better than on the Friday. So I guess the uh, you know, magic level was pretty high to be able to, to cope with the stress. And then would you have Poland on the Sunday sometimes too? I did one time and um, it uh, went horrible for me. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> <laughs> too much. I mean, not gonna lie, that would be you. You would if you made it all the way to the final on both days. You would do yeah. seven heats, seven heats, and then you have usually five, five or six heats on the Sunday. So you would end up being fourteen, around twenty heats in one weekend. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah it is a lot, and uh, especially what, what I feel when it comes to the GP, it's uh, you give so much out of your energy because you. you you give 100 percent and especially like you said you go to the go all the way to the final it's, uh, it's a lot of tension there's a lot of nerves there's, uh, there's many things going around in your head in your body and uh, I, I drain myself basically and uh, to recharge one time you can do the time a little bit hard yeah and it's like in respect, like you just said in the gps you are, it's not like you have league matches on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You have a GP, and I mean, it's like that mental game that you have to, you know, you go in and you can have, you know, you have fans. You'll have, uh, you have to go through your motions every every meeting and stuff like that. Um, but I, I can't even imagine doing, you know, two GPS in one weekend and then having to go do a Polish league, which is still really, really high level. Is there? Yeah, no, Olivia. it's 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 very demanding and very tough. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, any chance, <laughs> any chance versus a uh, a Red Bull versus Monster Bull meeting? Versus Monster meeting. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Ty, Freddy, Dudek, Holder Brothers, Emil Lambert, Magic Public Key. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be interesting. That would be really cool. I have to talk to Monster Joe about that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a, there's a few of each now, isn't there? No, there is. Yeah, I mean... We know who's going to win, eh? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> what about this one here? Have you have you spoken to Jakob Sorsel uh, recently? He doesn't have... He's, he isn't doing many meetings this year. Um, no, no. Yeah, not recently. I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I think he, he's in the he's in the third division in Poland, so they don't start the season just yet. And Sweden, obviously, they don't know exactly when they're gonna start. So uh, I think he's still uh, back in Sweden, you know, prepping for to get going. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, my dad did the third division meeting in his last year, or third division league in his last year, um, racing, and he didn't do as many meetings as he would regularly so i don't know do you feel like losing losing that one league in sweden uh did you feel like it it would uh um, worsen your riding do you do you like having more meetings or do you like having the time to recover now uh, i like the time to recover and also the extra time for my training in between the meetings you know when i was younger i kind of i just wanted to race every day and and i did i raced uh, england sweden poland gps for a number of, of years, but uh, now I'm a little bit older and I feel the the body takes a, a little bit of a longer time to recover. So uh, uh, for now, I'm pretty happy doing uh, just the one league and the GP. 
Wow. Um, I mean, it's interesting to hear. For other resources, did like having them, but I mean, probably it, it can nice. It would probably be nice to have those recovery days as well, especially when you're doing back to back GPS, and sometimes you have uh, Poland on the Sunday too. Yeah, and you have to remember, you know, we we have to travel as well. You know, when you uh, you need we need to go from A to B, and uh, it's also exhausting. And uh, with only doing the the one league in Poland, you know, I have uh, a lot more time for for my family for my recovery. Uh, without the traveling, which is tiring. Uh, instead, I can go to the gym or go out running or go my bicycle and uh, just uh, feel better uh, physically. Yeah, exactly. We have uh, Ben Trigger, one of the contestants to win our uh, bike giveaway. Um, ben did 17 heats in one day, two classes, 125 and 500. Um, red, the Red Car Summer Series, six heats in each class. Wow. And then in the in the morning, that was in the morning. And then in the evening, he did five heats in the British Youth Championship. At yeah, a different track. go for it. At a, at a different track. Yeah, but if you're young and hungry, you know, I think you should try and race as much as you can, you know, get as many laps in as possible. That's what I tried to do when I was uh, younger. And, uh, you know, I, I one year I did... Uh, I did uh, 20 race meetings in 21 days in different countries and you know on a bounce so that's you know you got to get a lap scene wow 20 meetings in 21 days in different countries <laughs> wow. that's quite insane so so what's your what's your day-to-day -day routine freddie from when you wake up you know what are you training what are you, what are you doing day to day what is it like being an extra league rider in poland Right now, you know, I'm uh, with my family being away. I'm, you know, I'm only focusing on my training and uh, my speed wise. So I, I just get up in the morning, have some, some good breakfast. So signal's uh, gone. So I presume uh, he's saying that he's mm, walking around his hotel room in his pants. Um, uh, There we go. <laughs> I didn't hear any of that. Yeah. Go again. <laughs> yeah, say, go again, say it one again. more time. Say it one more time. Say, say it one more time. Yeah, basic, basically, you know, I go up, have a, a good breakfast, and then I, I hit the gym, uh, do a, a workout, which I plan, whatever that might be. But that day is different. And uh, after that, I, I get back to the hotel, uh, have some lunch, and um, normally some paperwork or uh, some social media stuff take care of and uh, might go for another session of training in the evening or, or maybe uh, some yoga, uh, whatever. Uh, it's different from day to day. And then when, when do you usually get to go to the track and ride? Uh, Depends on uh, on the schedule, you know, my team have a practice schedule and this week we're going to practice on uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, Saturday oh, off nice. and race day on Sunday. That, that's very, it's nice to be able to get a couple couple practice sessions in and then I get to go race on, on the Sunday there. Yeah, that's, uh, it's a perfect setup and, uh, you know, normally we have a good practice. We put the, the starting gate up, uh, have a couple of uh, match races with the teammates and uh, you know, get ready to go. And that will be your first race of the season? That will be the first league match of the season. Awesome. Well, Jez? Yeah. I was just going to see if you had anything else to say. No, um, not really. So uh, the first first Grand Prix is uh, Tetro in Germany. Um, you're all ready for that, ready to go? Ah, well, I... Uh... COVID. Well, if it happens, we'll be ready. Uh, but uh, it's the early days still, and you know we we're trying to ride into some form. Uh, we definitely have uh, an eye on on the first one to, to be ready. And do you have anything new that's that's uh, that you haven't tried before that you're going to be using this year? We have done uh, some testing with uh, a few different things. Uh, some have worked 
should some haven't worked as good, but uh, you know, I always try and find something new, you know, even not only in the beginning of the year, but during the, the whole season, you know, we always trying something, trying to, to gain an advantage, trying to improve yourself. So it's so always ideas in the head and going around and mechanics have ideas and test it on the track and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And what is the usual, what was that? One second. Uh, what does the usual practice session look like? Do you, when you show up to the track, do you usually kind of just go out, take a quick look at the track and then go for practice or do you kind of run through your routines as you would as a race? Uh, pretty much not exactly the same routines as a race, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, it's very important for me to have a proper warm up, uh, even before practice, you know, I do my skipping rope and uh, get some, some my blood uh, pumping and uh, we normally have like uh, one go for free and then uh, we go from the tapes uh, at least at this point of the, the season when you're not really race sharp yet you know you need to to make many starts you need to race against other guys and later on I would say I, I won't would not do as many starts in, in practice I would more just get a, a nice feeling for the bike especially if it's a, a training before a, a league match. Perfect. Well, Jazz? No, I think that's, uh, I think that's about it. We'll, uh, we'll leave it there, dude. It's uh, been a pleasure having you on. This, the signal uh, has been a bit of a pain, but uh, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> Nothing we can do about that. But uh, yeah, it'd be great to speak to you again later on in the season once maybe you've had a, a Grand Prix or a few more meetings in under your belt and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you then and, and hear, hear all about it. Yeah, and hopefully have a, a better uh, signal back <laughs> then. Yeah. I think, it, I think you, know, you might need to reload on some Monster. You might need to take a few of those and I think it'll be good to go again. Yeah, it'll be good to go. <laughs> All right, dude. If you stay, if you stay behind the thing when uh, when we're finished, we'll we'll come and speak to you as well. Cool. You stay connected. All right, dude. You. Yeah. So, that was a really good show. But that was. It was uh, very tedious with uh, having a bad connection on Freddie's end. Yeah, was, uh, it's it's all right. I think I have a ghost in my room or something because I had my light bar up and then all of a sudden the light bar fell down and I was like, oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> no worries um so next week's show is going to be on monday um it's gonna be huge this is like wow like i can't believe uh the show that we've got lined up for for monday um so i've been speaking for months to thomas gazinski um and thomas gazinski is thomas gollub's manager and we've been speaking about getting Thomas on the show and doing a whole show that's dedicated just to him, um, which is going to be absolutely epic. So next Monday we have um, Thomas Gollum, which is and Thomas Gazinski, his who's going to help translate and Thomas Gazinski. So so uh, Thomas Gazinski is going to come on. Uh, Thomas has not been very well, um, and that's why he hasn't come on before. And when we have planned to have him come on, and then he hasn't been able to make it. So uh, we've got. Thomas Kaczynski is like a his his backup and sort of help with translation if he if he gets stuck on anything. So um super, super excited about that. It's gonna be a epic show of if we if there ever is gonna be an epic show, it's gonna be that one. Um what Thomas has done in Speedway is just legendary. Um, you know, and I think everybody appreciates what he, what a rider he is or was. So uh we will see you on Monday at 7:30. Boom. Have a good one. See you guys. Have a good one.